Larry, no matter what you do, don't stand up. Wait, who's, Terry, is that you? Just don't move. Oh, now you've gone too far. There's a bomb. A, a what? What are you talking about? A bomb, don't move. And a courtesy flush would be nice. You've got to be kidding me. No time for jokes, Larry. Huh. Extra trigger conductor, a couple of dummy wires, pressure plate. Larry, this is professional stuff for you. We don't have time to disarm it. Our only option is to hit it with liquid nitrogen. That'll freeze it and delay the blast by a second or two. I'll pull you off into the bathtub, and that'll give us good cover. There's only one problem with that, genius. There is no bathtub in here. I could have sworn there was a bathtub in here. Hey, genius, aren't you forgetting something? Yes, Larry, I'm sorry. How could I forget? On this episode of Hollywood Weapons, we're testing lethal weapon. Terry? We're gonna put Hollywood to the test. This is Hollywood Weapons. What are you doing? One hundred. Fitness is my passion. Yeah. Uh -huh. And now it's time for Terry's knucklehead science. I love them, you love them, and they were all massive hits. Yes, I'm talking about Lethal Weapon 1, 2, 3, and 4. Danny Glover is the cop on the verge of retirement who wants nothing more than to spend the rest of his days on the force in peace and quiet. I know the villain. But enter Mel Gibson's character, Martin Riggs, a special forces veteran who blames himself for the loss of his wife and is constantly daring the world to get him. There were so many great supporting characters in these movies, but I think my favorite was Joe Pesci as Leo Getz. He was annoying, really sympathetic, and funny the whole time. Funny? Funny how? Like a clown? <laughs> wrong movie, but I dig the reference. I gotta be honest, I've been wanting to grow my hair and test stuff from Lethal Weapon for a long time, so I am pretty psyched. Hey, where did you two morons get this from? You've really crossed the line this time. To be fair, where do we know the line is unless we cross it? Look, I could list all of the complaints that I've had about you all these years or the questions that I have about your sordid little childhood, or even just ask the question, why is everything you do abnormal? But I'm not gonna ask that question. And do you know why? No. Because I know that no matter what answer you give me, nothing will ever change. Larry, I think we just had a breakthrough. You keep being you, Larry. <laughs> My man. You were saying. Oh yeah, all the Lethal Weapon films were really good movies. Great stories, loads of action. So we decided to take a little something from all of them. Now in the second film, there's a scene with a truck carrying a surfboard that stops suddenly. The board launches through the air into the windshield of another vehicle and into a bad guy. Ew, that's probably where the term gnarly came from. Yes, that's where the term gnarly came from. Next. Okay, a lot of you have asked for this one. It's from Lethal Weapon 3. Rig shoots through a skip loader bucket. That seems impossible. Not the way he does it. Do you, you think Larry's still mad at us? I can never tell. What? Larry, it's... Larry, yeah, Larry. No, you're right, I can't tell either. So, fitness is your passion, huh? I did not know that. Larry, how excited are you to be testing stuff from Lethal Weapon? Very. I feel like there's some things left unsaid. Well, just, why do you have to make everything so complicated? Dude, I don't make things complicated. They just end up being that way. All right, what's the first test? Well, this is one that wasn't on your list. Smiley face. Oh, yes, the iconic one from the first movie. Riggs goes into the range, shows off with his Beretta, and drills a smiley face. I love that scene, actually. Exactly. It's really more of a skill test, we know that, but there's a lot of viewers who have written in and would love to see you make that attempt. 
I'm a little rusty, but uh, we'll give it a go. Particulars. Well, clearly he was in on, on an indoor range. In the film, we're on an outdoor range, but we estimate it's about 25 yards. That's where we got back there to the All target. the way to the back. All the way to the back. <laughs> yeah. We've already put in Murtaugh's nose shot for you. OK, cool. So you're going to have seven rounds, like you said, shooting it out of the Beretta 92F in 9 millimeter. This is not an easy thing to do, especially at that speed, but I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, I said what I said. Gun. Magazine. Weapons clear. Let's go down and take a look. All right. All right. Yes. <laughs> look, dude, I got them all. I mean, that's a hit, 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 and then these ones in here. Now, I have to admit, I slowed down because I know I'm not that good. Someone who's really good could do that really fast. I knew how to slow down to get all head hits. Right, and they are all head hits. Of course, the idea here was to get a smiley face. This is more of a I don't know, a sarcastic smirk, maybe? This is Terry after he's been awake for 48 hours. Exactly. Well, look, man, I mean, that's also why we, that's why we aim center mass. Yep. And this was really a skill test, not a weapons test, so... So, follow me. All right, the old backhoe test. We have a lot of requests for this. Yeah, a very popular scene in the third lethal weapon. Yeah. Uh, movie. There's a story point in there that the bad guys are using kind of some kind of special round to fight the police. Right, and they call it cop killers because it's able to punch through body armor. Exactly. And then one of those gun battles, the bad guy's actually charging at Riggs with a backhoe. Yeah. And he lifts up the scoop like that, and it kind of works like armor plating. Well, but yeah, and, and Riggs is shooting at it with his Beretta, and it's useless. Absolutely useless. So let's call that part one of this test. Yes. I have here a magazine with three rounds of a common service load, and we'll see if Riggs' gun really would be defeated by a backhoe. Well, it makes sense. I mean, we are men of science, and it's an experiment. We have to have a baseline. We've been wrong before, so we do have to test. Yeah, we've been wrong a few times. Weapon's clear. Let's go down and take a look. So there's a clear impact. Yeah. What's it look like on the backside? It doesn't look like it penetrated. Come here and look at this, though. It's bulged out. Like, yeah, it wants it's to a, go through. Yeah, so it's got a nice dent in it, but the normal service round did not penetrate the scoop, just like in the show. Yeah, which we saw. Okay. So what do you want to do? Well, in the movie, they toss him a M11-9, which is like a little Mac-type submachine gun that supposedly has the better bullets yeah, in it. Yeah, the cop killers. And I just happen to have one of those. So <gasps> let's go and give that a shot. OK, cool. So if you remember, we did say that the Beretta shooting the standard service round was really part one of this test. The control group, the if you will. The control group, if you will. What we're going to do is we're going to go <laughs> okay. to that, right? Yeah. So this is the same style gun that was used in the movie by the bad guys. Right. And in the scene, they toss one of these, fully loaded, mind you. No problem. To Mel Gibson. I'm sure catch. it was on safe. I'm sure it was. He catches it, and he continues to shoot full auto at the scoop. So that's what we're going to try to simulate right now. So we're using a bullet hose. There you go. OK. Open bolt gun, charge it to the rear. Doesn't look like it popped through, man. Yeah, yeah much no. He much heavier denting, 
than yeah. the service round. But clearly, a backhoe is good cover. So, I mean, yeah, look, I know it's lethal weapon, but this is a fail test. Because fail the, test the, for sure. the steel that's you know, out of these backhoes is pretty darn good cover. Larry, prepared as always, brought along some 9 millimeter steel core rounds that should give us our best chance to make Mel Gibson proud. It's not safe. I can't tell, man. Did yeah, I get through? I don't think you did. I don't okay. think you did. But that strip along the top there is also double reinforced. So let's give it one more round and see what happens. Well, we'll have to go down and check. Okay. Weapons clear. Did it go through? Did it go through? No. It did not. <laughs> but the gel, the bad guy's got some paint on him, so he he almost got it. It was close for sure. So what do you think? Well, we tried three different types of rounds, right? right. One was an average law enforcement round. One was a standard military round. And then these last ones that we tried were actually steel core penetrator rounds, and it still didn't go through the scoop. So I think we have to admit it's a fail it's test. It's a fail test. Well, look, a lot of a lot of our viewers wanted us to do this, yep. so it's good that we did. Mel Gibson might not have gotten through that. Well, he is Mel Gibson, so he's got a bit of an edge. That's true. Teamwork makes the dream work, Larry. Yeah, you keep on dreaming. I'm going to go sit up the next test. Lucky day there, ex-cop. We're at the range, testing stuff from the Lethal Weapon franchise. In the movie Lethal Weapon 4, there's an epic fight scene between Jet Li and Mel Gibson, and it ends up underwater. Mel Gibson grabs an AK-47, holds it up to Jet Li's chest, and cracks off like 20 rounds. A lot of questions here. Will the gun cycle? Since we know water's not compressible, will that pressure bulge the barrel? And finally, is Larry gonna ever admit that he loves doing this stuff with me? Let's find out together. It's a little cold for me, Larry. Well, luckily for you, you're not gonna be in the tank. You're gonna be out here with me because I got Andre to build us a thing. What does he put together now? Similar to what we've done in the past, we've got a rack with the AK. We have a fully loaded gel in front of it, triggering line, and you can see it's coming through this pulley system. Well, fully automatic, lots of energy, even underwater, right? For sure, there's a lot of unknowns here. Water doesn't compress, we right. know that. There's an open gas system that's now flooded with water. So we'll have to see what happens. So what do you think? Well, I think we can guarantee the first shot for yeah. sure. Yep. Anything after that, that's why we test. Well, I mean, we know the AK-47 is a workhorse. It's a really tough gun, so this would be the one, wouldn't it? We're lucky that in the movie they actually <laughs> use an AK-47. The most important thing is once you pull on the line and it gets firing, just keep Stay the tension on it. on it because it is set for full auto. Let's do that. Let's do it. Okay, go Ready, ahead buddy? there, slow take up on the tension. Three, two, one. He's dead. Uh, we got off two rounds. Two rounds. One actually penetrated all the way through. It didn't penetrate out the tank, though. So it just got out of him and just dropped down into the yeah, water. Water will do that to bullets. It this, slows it down this, dramatically. This whole system is not made to be fired underwater, so. Correct. Unsuccessful test, but bad guy's done. Right, gun works, but it didn't work the way it did in the movie. All right, so not to get off track, but when's the next big test? Oh, just give me a minute. Oh, cool. This gives me a minute to talk about the Three Stooges. So in the movie, there's this gag where he's constantly talking about- Come on, let's go. That was, that was in a minute. Uh-huh. Okay, 
Chase surfs up. Looks like it. <laughs> Crazy car chase scene. Riggs is hanging onto the bumper and the grill while the bad guy's driving the truck around. Yeah, really cool. We've got the bad guy truck. We have a truck with a surfboard. We've got a stalled vehicle. Surfboard launches right through the windshield. Wipe out for the bad guy. OK, so how in the world are you going to do this? Oh. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> Dr. Destructo, I think, uh, I think I know why you're here. When Larry calls, I answer. I'm always here to assist. So as you can see, we have a vehicle here similar to the one in the movie. Inside, we have our bad guy. OK, so how are you going to get that surfboard moving fast enough? So it was a little tricky. First, we had to calculate the speed of the vehicle when it hit the stalled car. How fast do you think? We're going to go for about 35 miles an hour. OK, so you're going to shoot a surfboard 35 miles an hour. How are you going to do that? We're going to use nitrogen compressed. Want to show me? I'm going to show you. I'm going to follow you. Come on. OK. That's kind of an ominous noise, on. Let me show you guys what I got here. <laughs> OK, this is our compressed nitrogen. It's controlled by a regulator. This regulator allows what we want into this accumulator. This accumulator will then hold whatever pressure comes out of here behind a solenoid valve, which is controlled by a battery. When we hit the button, it opens that valve immediately, releasing the pressure from this bottle down that surfboard. It's kind of like blowing the paper off a straw. That's, that's an analogy I can understand. Yeah. Larry, distance to target. From board to target, 11 feet. Andre, you confident? This surfboard's going to fly. If it goes through the windshield or not is yet to be seen. I love my job. Let's go. All right, so I'm going to bring this up. OK. Steve, let's add some pressure. Some nitrogen to this guy. Go ahead, bud. Sounds like a dive recompression chamber, man. <laughs> Pretty similar, <laughs> yeah. Sounds like. OK, guys, I'm going to go hot here, and I'm going to count it down. OK, going hot. 24 volts. All right. And three, two, one. <laughs> oh, my god! Oh, come on! Outstanding. Come on. I can't believe it. Wow. Look at this. Andre. What do I say? Larry, it went through the back windshield. And clearly, <laughs> wow. as in the film, it uh, decapitated the driver. I mean, we've really created a lethal weapon here. Nicely done, sir. Did this surprise you? What did you think, man? You know, guys, I am a little surprised that this surfboard uh, went through that windshield so easily. I was thinking because, you know, windshields are canted, surfboards have those kind of angle. I thought it was going to be hit and then kind of skip. Dude, you buried it all the way yeah. through. This is, you know, windshields are thick and they're made, you know, uh, with the mylar center. They're made not to break. Yeah. You know? So this is impressive to me. What do you got, I'm Larry? I'm not that surprised, really. I mean, knowing that the most popular board out there is actually called the bullet, <laughs> we've created an eight-foot bullet yeah. and launched it through the windshield, through the bad guy, and out the back. So very impressive. Yeah. Wild success. Yeah. My man, you're the best. Thank Always you. a pleasure, you guys. Good job, my man. You know, you got my number. I'm available almost any time. <laughs> uh, any final thoughts here? Yeah. Stay out of my bathroom. What a jokester. Well, there you have it, the Lethal Weapon franchise put to the test. I'd like to thank Larry, Andre, and Steve for making it fun and safe as always. What did we learn today? Shooting a smiley face at distance ain't easy at all. Even a steel core bullet won't penetrate a skip loader bucket. And although we did get two rounds off, firing an AK in full auto underwater is a no-go. But our surfboard test worked exactly like it did from the film. The Lethal Weapon movies were all big budget action extravaganzas, but I think the glue that held them together was the relationship between Murtaugh and Riggs. As actors, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover could not have done a better job. You always knew 
no matter how bad it was gonna get, that those guys would be there for each other. And whether it's in real life or in cinema, that's the good stuff. So if you're watching a TV show or movie and you think to yourself, can you really do that? Reach out to us and maybe we'll put it to the test. I'm gonna kinda miss my mullet. <laughs>